Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, thanks a lot for inviting me and thanks everybody for being here. So I'm going to talk about joint work with uh, Noah Golovic, uh, who's a PhD student uh, at MIT, and uh, Kai Xing Zhang, who's a postdoc. Um, and um, um, I'll, I'll just motivate things a bit and then uh, state the main results and then uh, uh, give a longer preliminaries and uh, more detailed uh, overview of the results and some of the proof techniques. So, so the, the motivation is uh, for this talk is that uh, a lot of uh, recent, uh, uh, you know, breakthroughs, claimed breakthroughs, and definitely open frontiers in machine learning uh, are um, um, uh, uh, based on uh, reinforcement learning. Uh, you know, some of the things you see here on the screen, uh, playing Atari, uh, solving a Go, uh, you know, you know, beating humans in Go and StarCraft, uh, depending on who you, who you ask, I guess, for StarCraft, um, self-driving cars, multi-robot interaction, and, 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 and a lot more. And um, a lot of these uh, applications, uh, I mean, even I guess the Atari one, uh, involve multiple players. And... Uh, our uh, understanding of algorithms for computing uh, optimal policies in multiplayer uh, reinforcement learning environments is not uh, as advanced uh, as uh, in the single agent case. And, and I'll discuss a little more uh, where the challenges lie. Uh, and uh, the goal of this talk is to investigate some basic, <coughs> I'm sorry, some basic uh, questions regarding equilibrium computation and learning in, uh, uh, in this setting. And um, right, so uh, to to to, to motivate things a bit, let me remind you the um, of the uh, basic uh, foundations, uh, uh, decision theoretic and game theoretic foundations of a single agent RL and multi agent RL. So single agent RL um, is, is 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 funded on uh, Markov decision processes uh, shown on the left where you imagine an agent who's interacting with some environment that has state. So um, uh, the interaction is multi-round. At every round, the agent submits an action <clears throat> to the environment. And uh, uh, based on some uh, dynamics uh, um, that are either known a priori to uh, the agent or are unknown uh, and must be learned, the uh, environment transitions condition on its current state and the, the action submitted by the agent transitions to a new state. And also it emits some reward to the agent. Now, again, as I was saying, uh, uh, this transition dynamics and rewards might be known a priori to the agent who's trying to design a good policy to interact with the world. Uh, and that, that is the case of Markov decision processes. Uh, and sometimes the dynamics uh, and rewards uh, are not known. Uh, in that case, the agent has to learn enough about the dynamics to design a, a good policy, and that is called reinforcement learning. So the difference is really about whether the agent knows or doesn't know about uh, the dynamics of the environment. Uh, stochastic games are very similar, except now you have many agents. Uh, uh, who all uh, submit uh, actions uh, to the environment. Now, the transition dynamics depend on the joint uh, action uh, profile uh, submitted by the agents. And the reward that uh, each agent I receives also depends on both the current state and the vector of submissions. Okay, so these are the differences. And again, um, uh, you know, if you you know if if the um, um, if the transitions and rewards are known, this is a game. Is a stochastic game. That's the model of, of Shapley. If it's not known and it has to be learned, that uh, multi-agent RL. Of course, in game theory, the boundary is about whether you know or you don't know are, are not always clear. Uh, you know, Sergio. You know. Uh, for example, has worked uh, a lot on how to learn how to play correlated equilibria in games that you don't know, for example. 
Uh, and, you know, again, again, you know, I don't view this uh, separation between stochastic games and uh, ma 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 multi agent that you know, uh, so clear on the basis of whether you know the game or not. But, but no, let's go with this uh, uh, analogy. Now, uh, on both sides, uh, we're, we're interested in policies. And um, there are all sorts of different policies that uh, kinds of policies that you might be interested in. Um, a standard type of policy that people are, are, are interested in, in both cases are what are called stationary Markov uh, policies. Uh, a stationary Markov policy on the left hand side uh, specifies <clears throat> a distribution of our actions uh, conditioning on the state. W what makes it uh, Markov is that uh, the, uh, the, you know, uh, the recommendation of what action to play uh, depends on the current state, but doesn't depend on the past, neither past states or actions of the interaction so far. That's what makes it Markov. What makes it stationary, it does not depend on the round T of the interaction. So stationary and Markov are two different adjectives. You associate to policy. And, and again, when I write the policy, like the way I write it here, it's obvious that, you know, it's Markov and stationary because there's no subscript T and there's, you know, the conditioning only has state S, okay? <coughs> um, and um, in Markov decision processes, uh, okay, so, I mean, you, you may consider stationary policies and uh, non-stationary and like history dependent policies, but, um, um, and, and, uh, and, and uh, but, but, you know, whatever you consider, ultimately you wanna, um, you know, what the agent wants to optimize is their long-term reward from using a policy, which is denoted V, superscript the policy that they're using. And uh, the long-term reward is computed by sampling a, you know, long or infinitely long trajectory according to the dynamics. So you start at some state, sample from some base measure, and then you have the agent uh, sample an action from the policy, uh, you know, uh, receive a reward, uh, observe some transition, and so on and so forth until infinity. And you're aggregating all the rewards they see, except you discount them by some gamma so that this thing doesn't blow up. The gamma is smaller than one. Uh, in games, you have the same business, okay? So you, um, uh, uh, a mark of a stationary mark of policy uh, specifies uh, an action profile for everybody given the state. Now, now, now that thing can be correlated. It can be a product measure. We're, we're going to consider variants of that. And similarly to before, agent I is interested in their own long-term reward, which is sampled <clears throat> in the same way. You start at some state. Everybody samples their actions according to the policy. Again, it could be a stationary Markov policy or something else. So we're going to be focusing on stationary Markov policies. And it could be a correlated product. Uh, and again, many variants there as well. But you know what people are interested in is long-term reward. So these are, and I will be, I will give even more details. I will dive deeper into stochastic games, but you know. I think most of the details are here and uh, uh, um, happy to take questions. Feel free to interrupt me or I will uh, keep uh, going to talk about a little bit about uh, some equilibrium concepts here and the motivation for this talk. Uh, a stationary, with all this notation, a stationary Markov-Nash equilibrium on, on the right hand side is a product measure policy. So a policy uh, uh, wherein uh, at every state, every agent uh, uh, samples independently their action. And I, I, I realize that I have some inconsistency. M is the number of players, so this would be M. Uh, such that for every player I, and for every alternative policy they could have used instead, their value <clears throat> under using the Pi i policy from, from, from this measure is better 
compared to if they were to switch uh, to some Pi IT, then let everyone else play it according to this product measure. So that's a stationary mark of Nash. And that under quite general conditions. So if the discount factor is, uh, for example, is smaller than one and the states and actions are finite, which is the setting I'm considering here, uh, this Nash stationary Nash exists, which is pretty cool. Because I mean, this function here uh, is not a um, concave function of uh, pi i. It's, it's not a concave in, in agent i's uh, uh, policy because you know, like uh, your policy affects your the, you know, the transitions and the payoffs. But, but you're going to come back to the same states and. So, so this is not a convex concave function of, of your policy, but nevertheless, an equilibrium exists, which is pretty cool. I mean, uh, of course, the foundations of games, stochastic games, are, are, were laid by Shapley, who showed also, uh, in fact, even a minimax theorem holds uh, for zero sum uh, stochastic games. Uh, but uh, and then, you know, later work in the 60s showed that uh, stationary Markov Nash's exist in these games. Uh, and uh, oh, uh, Costas, can, uh, can I ask a question? Uh, what's the what's the proof approach, if you know, for this existence? Yeah, is, so it, is it again contraction. a Michal contraction? Uh, so, um, um, so, 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 okay, so I mean, uh, uh, so. so uh, so, so, so you're talking about probably you're talking about uh, sharply. You're not talking about general games, right? I mean, so for general for games, general games uh, yes. I mean, the the, the whole thing, uh, the fact that gamma is less than one means that you compactify everything, and uh, so uh, everything is uh, the, the the big problem is when gamma equals one. For gamma less than one, that's uh, it's uh, there's no issue. But but just a little comment here, right? I mean, so uh, for for general games, there are there are multiple equilibria. So uh, it's not a contraction map; it's a Brouwer fixed point. And the way you the way you make the problem better behaved is you write uh, you you do you do it in terms of uh, Q value functions. So you uh, you um, <coughs> uh, you associate <coughs> excuse me you uh, expand uh, you you write the fixed point in terms of two objects. Uh, <laughs> the uh, policy uh, that you're trying to, 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 to show ex the, the Nash equilibrium policy you're trying to show exists, but also the induced values uh, at states for taking different actions. And uh, that, and then you apply Kakutani. So, so ultimately the proof of, of, of this theorem is based on Kakutani's uh, theorem. But the, uh, the original, uh, I think Sergi is right. I think the original Shapley proof that shows the minimax is, is Rewriting the problem uh, in a in a way that uh, I think it is a, a contraction in that case. Yeah, uh, the, the <laughs> fact that gamma is less than one makes the payoff function continuous in the in the in the policy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so once you have you have continuity and the the, the space of policies is is uh, compact. Okay, then then essentially you apply a fixed point. But but still, I mean, it's not a concave function, right? So the no, no, you don't need concave. You don't need concave for that. The concavity plays no role here. <clears throat> uh, it's just I mean, for for Brouwer or Kakutani, whatever, which is essentially a, a slightly bigger Brouwer, you need compact spaces and continuous functions, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And it's continuous because gamma is less than one. Yeah, I mean, you need that the best response uh, correspondence has yeah, some nice uh, properties. Uh, yeah, I mean, there are technicalities. I mean, one honest work. Okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> but essentially, it's 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 probably very similar to to just Nash equilibrium to just Nash equilibrium existence in. So so if gamma is less than one, you have all the properties that 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 you have in a regular game, and you follow the same fixed point, and everything works, right? Uh, yes, M modulo several technicalities that took them 10 years to figure out, so from Chaplin, but yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> I mean, okay. I mean uh, there is some work, there is not, it's not, and, and even if I, if I have some vague remembrance that, that I don't know if think, but there was some proof which had an error in the middle, I don't know if think is the one that is correct, or maybe think had an error and then it was corrected later, but yes, there are there are technical issues. Which, uh, okay, let's let's go. On. I, I, I apologize. <laughs> I was the one asking, so please go. No, on. That's okay. 
Uh, and uh, okay, so stationary Markov course correlate equilibrium, as you may imagine, is that uh, I will place no restriction on the on the on the policy, right? <coughs> So I will allow uh, correlation uh, uh, in the policy and again, the definition otherwise stays the same for every player, for any alternative policies, they prefer to, uh, before even seeing recommendations, they prefer to switch with a contract <laughs> that they will follow the recommendation uh, versus uh, uh, like uh, doing their own thing, switching to this pi i tilde policy and letting everyone else uh, uh, follow the recommendations of the policy. All right, so these are the, the two main solution concepts for stochastic games. Now, uh, that was a long road to motivate the results here, but uh, uh, what do we know algorithmically about computing optimal policies? So for Markov decision processes, uh, there is a lot of work. Um, and again, and here like uh, con contraction maps are really crucial. There is all sorts of algorithms for uh, computing optimal policies uh, based on um, uh, explicitly keeping track of the, of the policies themselves or, or the you know q values that I was uh, q value functions the value functions that I was talking about before uh, but there is a lot of work uh, uh, for both uh, uh, what is called planning where you, where you know the MDP and you want to find an optimal policy and and RL, where, where, you, where you, we don't know the, 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 the um, MDP, and you, you have to uh, uh, learn it while uh, interacting uh, with it. Um, and, um, uh, you know, typically the, the, you know, the convergence of this algorithm is based on contraction maps or, or um, yeah, contraction maps typ typically. And uh, there is a, a surge of recent interest in uh, on studying kind of like that is the learning, uh, the learnability of, of, of optimal policies. On the stochastic game front, though, which motivates my talk here, uh, we don't have uh, a very good understanding. So of course uh, we couldn't in general, right? I mean. Uh, you know, like if I have a single state, uh, these games are at least as general, right? I mean, as uh, single shot uh, uh, games. And so uh, Nash equilibrium is NP is PPD hard, is PPD hard, is PPD complete, it's PPD hard to compute. <clears throat> so so I, I guess uh, now you are referring to the case where you, you are talking about product distributions, because if you are talking about connected distributions, we are back to the one person. Yes. So let's 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 talk about this. So uh, hold the, just put an asterisk on this, uh, Zergi. Uh, so yeah. So if we study stationary markets, except of course for size, yes, but uh, yeah. So if the we size consider... being a product, but but uh, the the complexity is the same as the one person. Uh, Sergio, put an asterisk on that. Okay, there there are some surprising surprises there. Okay, <laughs> so. Uh, uh, there are two things again. You know, I talked about two equilibrium concepts. One is stationary Markov Nash, and one is stationary uh, Markov CC. So stationary Markov Nash, as I was saying uh, just a minute ago, are at least as hard as uh, Nash equilibria in general games. Why? Because you know you're going to have a single state, right? And you know, um, uh, you know, you you may be returning always back to the same state. And uh, you can encode any game you want as a stochastic game. And of course, learning uh, a stationary mark of Nash is as hard as finding a Nash of the original game. So uh, that, uh, that is a no-go, unless you consider uh, two player zero sum games. And indeed, there has been a lot of recent work on that front, uh, on the front of uh, computing approximate uh, stationary mark of minimax equilibria uh, or learning them uh, through interaction uh, in, a, uh, in a in a in a zero sum stochastic game, and um, that is not uh, uh, a an immediate uh, inter application of no regret learning in in general games. Um, the reason being is that actually you can show that doing no regret uh, in a, in such an environment is actually uh, intractable. 
So you cannot do no regret in a in a in a in a in a, in a adversarial in an adversarial Markov decision process. You cannot do no regret learning. Therefore, you cannot just have two agents who are doing no regret learning against each other to converge uh, to a equilibrium. Roughly speaking, playing a best response to a mixture of policies of the opponent is a hard problem, and this is why you cannot do no regret uh, learning. So more uh, specialized work has to be done, and this is why you have all these references here about uh, uh, computing equilibria in uh, or learning equilibria in two-player zero-sum stochastic game. Okay. Uh, but but that again is only for two-player zero-sum games. There's a lot of progress uh, on that front. There is less progress on the course correlated equilibrium front, surprisingly. Okay. So. Uh, you know, course correlated equilibria in uh, 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 single shot, uh, you know, in normal form games <laughs> uh, is a very tractable problem uh, using linear programming or no regret learning. But there are no known polynomial time and polynomial sample results, <laughs> except, uh, you know, some results that deliver either non Markovian uh, strategies or non stationary uh, uh, strategies. And what I want to ask in this talk is why why is that the case? Why is it that <clears throat> you know course correlated equilibrium, which is a go-to solution concept to avoid intractability results, why is there no so, no much progress uh, uh, on that part? Okay. So uh, question: uh, When you say poly time or poly something, is poly what in the number of states? Besides, I mean, yeah, of so course, in the number of <laughs> strategies, but it's also in number of states, right? The number of states and the number of actions. Yeah, yeah, so again, uh, the, the is that when you have a fixed game, it's like having a fixed number of uh, one state if you want. Okay, so all the good results that you mentioned are exactly when there is just one state. When you have many states, then of course, the, that's, that's where the polynomiality is going to break down on the states, I guess. Yes, as far as we know, yes. And uh, yeah, and, and the reason it breaks is the main results of this talk, I guess. Uh, oh, I see. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, so... Uh, uh, so what we show in this work is that, uh, in fact, uh, computing stationary CCEs in these games is uh, hard, uh, and I'll tell you how hard, what type of hard it is. And uh, for this reason, we, you know, uh, we we uh, advocate that uh, I guess you know the only option I guess to to avoid these results is to drop something, and uh, we provide decentralized uh, learning algorithms for learning non-stationary uh, course correlated equilibria. Uh, but are, which are still Markov, uh, <clears throat> which are still Markov. Okay, so this was the overview and the motivation. And, uh, the, and hardness, wanna... uh, the hardness requires it to be Markovian. Excuse me. Uh, the, yeah. So the hardness is for. I'm sorry. Yeah. So the hardness is for bo both of both of these results are Markovian. So sorry, I dropped this adjective. Uh, mm -hmm. So the hardness is for stationary Markov CCs. And what if and you leave result? stationary and drop Markov? Well, uh, yes, you can also do that. You, you, you know, and and, and the, you know, that there is some work in the literature that can 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 deliver that to you. So uh, you have history dependent. You have complex complex history dependent strategies, uh, but uh, but then would it be poly time? Actually, sorry, I'm not sure. Actually, I, I don't think it's going to be stationary. <laughs> sorry, I don't think you can uh, keep stationary. And uh, yeah, uh, sorry, I, I don't think there is such a result. Yeah, stationary. But, but, but does the setting it. make sense at all? Yeah, that's a good question. Like stationary and uh, history dependent. Yeah, I don't, I don't. I don't know. I don't think it makes sense. <laughs> I don't know. Because like uh, the the length of your history uh, basically uh, grows with the time of interactions. So, yeah, I, I don't think so. So in a yeah. sense, it must depend on the time. If it's uh, yeah, so like exactly. So if it's history dependent, I mean maybe it's like you know like maybe you look at two rounds before. I don't know. I haven't. I haven't. Or, or like some summary statistic of the past. So maybe right. Maybe there is some opening there. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. okay. So so I don't know. Is the, is okay, the, is but the, this is the, Markovian stationary versus non-stationary. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yeah, cool. All right, so uh, I, I hope I, I did a decent introduction and, and motivated the results. Uh, 
So let me do like, uh, and then I want to state this result and give some sense of the proofs. <clears throat> uh, so, and you know, like, so, so here I'm going to do things formally, but uh, for this audience, I don't think I, I think I, I said enough already for, for, for the setup, but uh, let me, uh, let me do it uh, kind of like fast. So, you know, as usual in game theory, a game is a tuple of a billion things. Okay. So the same is true here. Uh, so <laughs> the state space, the action space, <laughs> the dynamics, the rewards, the discount factor, and the, you know, initial uh, distribution over states. Uh, you have your agents here, the environments. Uh, I don't know. I, I think, I, I, you know, I said all these things. Um, uh, uh, people do joint action sets. There is a transition kernel, um, and uh, you know, tuple of reward functions uh, that give a reward to an agent given the action profile in the state, right? So I, I said all that. So the discount factor and the original distribution of our states. So I think I gave all this notation already, uh, and the game goes like people submit actions, transitions happen, rewards are emitted, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> Uh, uh, again, a, a mark of stationary policy is a mapping from the state space to a distribution of uh, action profiles. And again, I will, depending on what policy we're talking about, might be a product or not. And the value function for a player is, uh, you know, sample an infinite trajectory according to the dynamics of the space and the policy, and I'm aggregating uh, the rewards. I guess I, I hear I switch notation again, sorry, from uh, T to H, but okay. It's, H is the time, okay, whatever. Um, and, and you know, like, I guess this is like a little thing I'm introducing here uh, for the slides. Here I have a separate object for every state, right? So for, for every player and every state and every policy, I consider the value if I were to follow this policy starting at that state. While here I have, I'm sampling the starting state from the distribution mu. That is the little, right? So when I write VIP of S, I mean, I start at S. Uh, when I write VIP of mu, I start at an S sample from mu and then I, uh, you know, run my policy. And, you know, like I gave this distinction because, you know, like I will be interested in also perfect, what is called perfection here. So we'll get to this. So definition for every epsilon, I call an epsilon approximate stationary Nash equilibrium, a product policy, right? So the a policy that is a, for every state samples from a product measure over actions. Uh, such that uh, no player can deviate. So uh, every, uh, and gain more than epsilon. Like every deviation uh, uh, would give a player at most epsilon better than uh, uh, following, uh, you know, the policy pi. <coughs> right, and, and I already said that this is at least as hard as solving normal form games. All right, so which motivated uh, are epsilon approximately stationary CCEs, which is, uh, again, here I'm introducing approximation uh, and perfection, okay? So uh, I'm gonna call a policy an epsilon approximate stationary CCE uh, if uh, uh, this first equation is true, which, which has a, a, starting a starting state sampled from new. I'm gonna call it perfect if it simultaneously uh, is uh, uh, near optimal, no matter where you start. Okay, so these are, these are slightly different things, right? I mean, so the first one is on, for an average starting state, uh, this is near optimal. The second one is, you know, a policy that simultaneously, no matter where you started, uh, it is a near optimal for every player. This is the little distinction, right? Between uh, perfect and, uh, you know, imperfect. Uh, and you could but, make it more elegant, use mu in the second one also, say for every mu. <laughs> so the first one is for a given mu, the second right. definition is for all mu. Cool. And that sounds yeah, yeah, yeah. more elegant. <laughs> okay. Wait, right. Costas, so when you write mu, you mean that you take expectation 
over uh, S0 uh, drawn from you? Yes. Yeah, yeah like here. So, so ah, ah, sorry. Yeah. yeah, I didn't see. There is a little discrepancy in my notation. H, T became H, S0 became S1. Sorry about this. <laughs> we forgive <Right>. you. Uh, forgive. <laughs> um, but yeah. It's all history right? by now. History by now, that's right. <laughs> I, li I like your jokes, uh, Sergei. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 it was very, like your talks at Simon's were very fun this semester. <laughs> so, ah, were you there? I didn't even know. I mean, uh, I, I couldn't was, see uh, anybody, uh, so never mind. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so this I'm gonna, I'm gonna use in the future, this, this joke I'm gonna use in future talks, okay? So, <laughs> all right, so uh, um, yeah. So what are our main results? So our main results are the following. So for uh, some constant, absolute constant epsilon, uh, computing an epsilon approximate uh, perfect uh, uh, stationary CC, even in two player games, and even for discount factor one half, is PPD hard. Uh, so just to think about this a little bit, so what this says is that, and in contrast, with normal form games, it says that sort of like, uh, if you expect the interaction to last two rounds as opposed to one round, so one round is normal form games, right? If you expect the interaction to be one round, uh, CCs are very tractable. If you expect it to last two rounds, uh, so if the discount factor is a half, then even if you have two agents and you have, you're, you're shooting for just an absolute constant approximation, that's PPD hard, which is very which was very surprising to us. <clears throat> so that's for perfect. So for uh, imperfect, <coughs> we have two results. One is uh, so uh, again, it's PPA hard in the number of states, right? Not uh, in the number of strategies. Because for S equals one, for S of size one, I mean, yeah. again, I don't know, it's background, you are, you are yeah. comparing it. So if there is just one state, Correct. then this is easy or whatever, I don't know what. Uh, Correct, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's okay. not a bit hard. Correct. Okay, so that yes. means that it must be PPA hard in uh, the size of S. Because of S, yeah. Yeah. It's because of S. Um, uh, for... Uh, Non-perfect, same is true, except we need to assume <laughs> what is called the PCP for PPAD conjecture, uh, which uh, I guess I'm not going to, it's a plausible conjecture, but uh, I'm not going to get in, uh, into it. Um, and uh, if you want to drop this P PCP for PPAD conjecture, uh, you, you can get the same result for imperfect, except rather than an absolute constant uh, approximation, the approximation uh, uh, for which we show hardness is smaller. It is inverse proportional to the number of states. But uh, but 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 it's still um, uh, just inverse poly in the number of states and and sort of like the types of algorithms that you would like in a ML setting would have to scale like poly one over epsilon. So definitely this invalidates the existence of such. Algorithms like the types of things you would get from no regret learning would scale like one polynomial in one over epsilon because the rates would be like one over t to something. Uh, so this uh, statement invalidates the existence of such uh, uh, you know no regret learning procedures. Of course, larger gamma is harder, so still be pretty hard. And uh, uh, okay, so. Regarding the inclusion to PPAD, that was shown by Denk et al. And also there is parallel work to ours that came on the archives uh, at the same time. Uh, uh, and that showed that uh, uh, a weaker version of the first theorem, uh, so for perfect CCs, and, but um, uh, uh, not for, for two player uh, games, but for, uh, 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 I don't know, like a bigger number of players and not a constant epsilon, but like a inverse poly epsilon. But yeah, but yeah so this was similar work, uh, so like, uh, sim like contemporaneous work uh, showing something like the first result. 
So, uh, sorry, Costa is just uh, all this. Now, pi is in delta of the product of the AIs, correct? Uh, excuse me, which I? Uh, pi, 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 the policy is in the product of the AIs, not, uh, it's, it's in delta of, the, of A, not in the product of delta AI, right? We are talking now not about, we are talking about uh, correlated distributions. Correlated, correlated policies. yes, correlated. Policies. Yeah, correlated not, policies. Not, uh, not independent policies. That's right. Not, uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Right. But, but uh, since you're asking, uh, Sergio, let me clarify the following point. So the CCs we're considering here, which is kind of like what the ML uh, community is attracted to, is you arrive at a state, there is a correlated distribution that you sample. You transition to a new state, there is another correlated distribution that you sample independently. There are no, there are no correlation across states in the sense that, you know, like, like, a, like the normal form correlated equilibrium in this space would be there is a there would be a joint distribution of our policies. At the beginning of time, you would sample that joint distribution of our policies. Then you would give every agent a policy, and then they're on their own, right? That would okay, be the so normal saying, form. Yeah. So that the correlation be, is at the behavioral level and not at the correct. at the strategic level at the normal correct. form. But, correct. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Okay. No, that's uh, okay. Uh, so let me uh, give. Uh, uh, well, it must be because you are talking about Markov, so it must be. There is no yeah. other choice. I mean, yeah. uh, that distinction okay. will matter when it's when it's not Markov. But once it's Markov, then if there is any correlation, it's clearly the behavioral level. Right. I mean, at the state to at stage to stage level, that means. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thanks. Um, uh, so I guess I'm, I'm, I'm now thinking about what to uh, do next. So I'm going to give a sense of the techniques, but I don't want to dive too much into the hardness result. I'm going to just give you like a few elements of the proof. So uh, first of all, like, uh, how do we do this result? So, so, so we focus our attention to what are called turn-based stochastic games. So in these games, there's a single agent that plays at every state, right? So, you know, you know, like Costas plays in state uh, as Costas, uh, so, so some state, then, you know, like the transition somewhere, then maybe that state belongs to Michal, Michal plays, then the transition somewhere else, uh, Sergi plays and so on and so forth, right? So- uh, every, but no, there are only two players, can't be, it's back to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and uh, yeah, so in these games, uh, because, you know, uh, there is a single agent at every sta uh, state, uh, CCEs and Nash's are the same. So we focus on, 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 you know, on that special case and we show the same result for that special case. Um, now the way we do it, and I'm not gonna get into the details. I mean, it's like, uh, it's an archetypical PPAD uh, hardness proof. You have to start with uh, the satisfiability for PPAD, which is the generalized circuit problem. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen such a reduction, but basically you're given a circuit and that circuit doesn't have Boolean gates, but it has arithmetic gates. So gates that do, that enforce uh, arithmetic uh, uh, relationships between their inputs and their outputs. Uh, you know, uh, and this could be basically addition, comparison between the inputs uh, or assigning a value to the output. So these are just, just the palette of gates that you have are just these you see here. And you have to find an approximate a satisfying solution for a circuit that uh, uh, has no inputs. It just connects a bunch of gates. You wanna uh, uh, assign uh, values to the wires of that circuit so that all the gate conditions are approximately satisfied to within plus minus epsilon. So that is the satisfiability problem for PPAD. And you have to start with that and construct a stochastic game that uh, uh, such that uh, uh, CCEs in that uh, stochastic game correspond to solutions to that uh, circuit, uh, like to this arithmetic circuit satisfiability uh, problem. And uh, okay, so the, you know, I guess so. There is a way to do it. So how, like, um, um, so how do we do it? Well, I mean, let me just show you a picture, kind of like that tries to reflect. Uh, uh, how this might be done. So 
you know, so, so, so basically for every uh, gate of your arithmetic circuit, you want to construct a little gadget in your stochastic game that uh, kind of simulates uh, uh, what uh, the enforces the constraints that the gate wants to see satisfied. And um, so basically you have, you know, like, I guess, you know, like for, uh, you know, uh, so let, you, here I'm considering a gate <laughs> whose output is supposed to be the average of the inputs. Uh, so you have uh, a state of your stochastic game for the inputs to your gate and for the output to your gate. So these are the states corresponding to the two inputs of the gate and the output of the gate. And uh, um, uh, kind of like the connect, and these are the, and then, you know, you have some uh, sort of like auxiliary states that you introduce. So you kind of like, introduce a state that kind of like sits in between uh, the two states simulating the inputs and the outputs of the gate and some sync state that is absorbing stuff. And uh, you hook them up uh, in, in, you know, kind of like in the way you see here. And, and, and the salient point here is that, I mean, of course, information flows uh, from left to right in, in, the, in the circuit, right? I mean, like the output must be the sum of the inputs, right? Uh, how can you make the, the how, how can you, the information flow in, in, the, in the stochastic game should flow the other way, right? I mean, for this guy to satisfy, for, the, for this guy, right? I mean, to uh, play a policy that depends on the policies that these two guys play, of course, he should be pointing to something that points to these guys and therefore uh, have these guys payoffs be affected by what these players acting on the stage do. So kind of like the, the information flow must be reversed. Uh, uh, when you try to simulate uh, uh, gates with uh, stochastic games. And um, yeah, so what I'm showing here is, for example, like the, the what, what I'm showing is like the, the uh, uh, some elements of uh, the, you know, again, this is just impressionistic at this point, uh, some elements of the transitions, like the player who's acting here, when they play zero, uh, with probability I have, they go to the state controlled by this player, or, or I would probably have to go here. When they play one, they look, they go to the state controlled by this player. So like uh, when they play zero, they go towards the left. When they play one, they go towards the right. The player who's controlling this state, uh, when they play zero, they go to the state controlled by this W player. When they play one, they go to the sink, okay? And you have to set up the rewards in a way that uh, in any CCE of this game, uh, <clears throat> the probability uh, that this agent uh, plays one is equal to the, for example, if you're simulating this gate, to the average of the probability that these two players play one. Uh, and, you know, what we show is we can do it and we can do it for every uh, gate of the arithmetic circuit side problem. Let me not get into the details uh, more than what I just did, but uh, uh, you can simulate on that and then you can uh, paste uh, all the gates of the generalized circuit problem into a one big stochastic game uh, to make sure that any CC of the stochastic game will give you a solution to the stochastic game to do the to the generalized circuit problem. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Now, um, okay. So we go and implement every gate, and um, um, that you know is already good enough to give us uh, a decent result. Uh, which is that uh, if we could have uh, one state uh, controlled by one player for every gate uh, of the generalized circuit problem, then there is an there is a one-to-one -one mapping between correlated equilibria in the game and solutions to the general circuit problem. But, but of course, we have too many players in this game. I mean, we have one for every gate. We have a player, so we have too many players and too many states. And uh, you know, a lot of the difficulty uh, in the construction comes from like, uh, 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 you know, converting this uh, multiplayer, multi-state game into a two-player game. Uh, and uh, there is some conflict that arises when you paste, when you try to paste uh, this guy, uh, details don't matter, but when you try to paste uh, gadgets corresponding to different gates together, uh, uh, there are, uh, uh, things uh, that are inconsistent <laughs> in the reward functions and uh, 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 between, you know, 
uh, right? Because because here, like, kind of like I'm showing you, for example, that you know, like in this state, uh, this guy gets some reward, uh, right? And uh, uh, in this state, this other guy also has to get some reward. And if these two guys, for example, are controlled by the same uh, uh, player, then there is some reward inconsistency, and kind of like you know. Uh, assigning the same player to different states of this game uh, requires us to do some processing. Okay, so this is where a lot of the work goes, but details don't matter because, uh, you know, I didn't get into the details of the rewards and I, I didn't intend to be there. So, um, um, but, but roughly speaking, this is how uh, you, you attain that and when the difficulties lie. I hope that was impressionistically interestingly interesting enough okay all right so um just popping out to the stack um um uh what can we hope to uh uh compute uh non-stationary policies is one uh, possibility uh where uh at every time step uh we allow a different uh policy uh to be used so there is one policy for every uh, uh, time step, right? So at time one, people sample from policy pi one, their action profile, uh, time two from pi two and so on and so forth at step H from pi H and so on and so forth. And uh, 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 we call for every epsilon and epsilon approximate station, non-stationary CC is such a non-stationary Markov policy such that uh, no player has an incentive to uh, not uh, follow the recommendation of this non-stationary <laughs> uh, policy, uh, at least not more than epsilon incentive, okay? Does, does the definition make sense? Okay. All right. <clears throat> now, non-stationary policies are actually pretty well behaved computationally. And the reason is that uh, you can find them via backwards induction. So, so what you do is you go out to time one over one minus gamma, gamma is the discount factor. So you go out deep in the horizon and you truncate your game there thinking that for example, like if you if you make it to 100 years old it doesn't matter what you do after that right i mean you can drink you can smoke whatever like after 100 years doesn't matter okay <laughs> so you say okay after 100 years i'll do whatever it does it's so far in the future that doesn't matter and then you do backwards induction from there okay and that will give you a non-stationary policy for what you'll do when you're 90 when you're 80 when you're 70. <laughs> i want to, to know all right uh, now, in terms of computing this non-stationary, okay, so computing non-stationary policies, if you know the game, if you have access to the game, uh, is, non, is, is not a problem. You can do it. <clears throat> Wait, uh, but uh, is this a backward induction polynomial? Uh, Don't you have um, a exponentially many states? Um, no, I have. Uh, it's going to be polynomial in S, the number of states. Uh, yeah, so I mean, yeah, you'll visit all the states at every time step. But 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 S for me, S is like I'm, I'm okay. Okay, you want to be polynomial in the number of states. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, right. So uh, now. <laughs> When you want to find those such a thing through interacting, uh, the picture is not that, that clear. So what we know is that so there are two groups of work. Uh, one group of work requires uh, exponential time in the number of players to learn non-stationary Markov CCs. And in, in, in multi-agent RL, this is called the curse of multi-agents. Uh, and the reason is that kind of like, uh, these are model-based algorithms. So uh, the way they proceed is they try to learn the transition dynamics, but the transition dynamics of the environment 
uh, depend on the action profile and that scales uh, exponentially uh, with the number of players so if you if you're targeting to learn the transition dynamics you you are married to this exponential dependence in the number of players uh, which is impractical uh, and um, there's also work that uh, learns a uh, 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 that 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 is not exponential, but but it does not learn a Markov policy, but a non-Markovian policy. So uh, this is an algorithm called V-learning, which is very simple uh, in terms of uh, 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 its computation. But but after it's kind of like a several rounds of interactions of the players that are very simple, uh, basically agents run uh, bandit algorithms at all states at all for, for all states for all time steps uh then they do some uh, you know they after this you know this is done the output policy is a very uh intricate uh, history dependent uh, policy uh but, but at the same time it is decentralized so <clears throat> um uh, in, the, in the following sense uh, the agents only see states, their own actions, and their own rewards. Uh, so they interact with the environment, but don't see, you know, what the other agents are playing, and they don't communicate with their other agents. Uh, but you know, they share common randomness. So, so, so the, the decentralized model of computation that, I, that I'm talking about here is one like this, right? So, um, agents, you know, submit actions see their own reward and the state, the new state, but they don't see the other people's actions. But at least they have access to this shared randomness that they can uh, use to maybe correlate their actions on. All right, so this is the decentralized model. And this uh, recent work I was talking about, the V-learning work uh, is decentralized in this sense. It is a polynomial in the number of in number of agents, number of states, numbers of actions, uh, but they output a, as I was saying, a non-Markovian uh, uh, intricate uh, non-Markovian uh, policy. Um, and um, here is the um, kind of like the model of pack learning that uh, these uh, works are targeting. So basically like it's called episodic pack RL uh, model. What episodic means is that um, there is an episode uh, wherein uh, the agents are using a policy to sample a trajectory that they observe. They observe their own uh, action and reward and all the state transitions. Uh, but you know the sample trajectory. Then you know maybe they update their policies and then sample a new trajectory and so on and so forth. So this is episodic. This is what's called episodic learning. At the end of this episode, uh, many episodes, they are supposed to know a a, a, a CC of some type. Uh, I guess. Let me, so um, so the contribution of our work is to basically resolve the issues that uh, exist in, in prior work which is to uh, provide a decentralized uh, learning algorithm uh, that uh, uh, is polynomial uh, albeit not uh, what a, a practical <laughs> polynomial, but like it is polynomial uh, it uh, uh, is polynomial in the uh, number of states the number of actions it doesn't pay exponential in the number of players uh, and uh, epsilon and uh, the discount factor, and it outputs a uh, an approximate non-stationary Markov uh, CC with high probability. <laughs> should it so be the we, size? Should it be the size of AI? Yes, it's the size of it, the cardinality of AI. Uh, importantly, not the product of the cardinalities, which is uh, what a model-based algorithm would give you. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really close to my uh, time horizon and my backwards induction didn't work <laughs> perfectly. But, you but, did uh, forward induction, that was your problem. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, but I mean, 
uh, what is the intuition for this algorithm? I mean, like, kind of like what we want to do is backwards induction uh, in this algorithm, but we cannot do it really because we, you know, we don't know the transitions uh, of this game. But like, if you, you know, I mean, as you know, like if if you were able, here's here's backwards induction. Like, I mean, if you would would be able to do backwards induction. Again, as I was saying earlier, you would truncate the horizon at some very large uh, capital H. You know, you would say, okay, you know, if I'm 101 years old, I don't care. Okay, so the values I'm expecting to get from them are zero from then on. And then inductively, you work, you go back in time, right? And, you know, you assume, uh, you know, you know all the values uh, that you can uh, get from a CCE. Uh, from you know then on and then you know at uh, some state uh, that is sitting at uh, uh, h little h you construct a game what is the what are the values of this game right so the values of this game are the immediate values if at that state so you're at player i so at that if, if at that state this action profile is chosen you what you get you get your immediate reward plus the expected future reward thereafter, right? Which you have already computed by induction. This is how backwards induction work here, right? So uh, at state S, if you're player I and people play action profiles A, you get some immediate reward from the environment. And then you will transition to some state. And from then on, you would follow the optimal, you know, the, the CC that, you know, you are in the process of computing, but you have already computed what it does for later H's. Uh, and that uh, gives you some, uh, you know, expected uh, long-term value thereafter, which you're adding uh, to your thing. You define a game, and you find a CC for that game. And that CC for that game gives you a policy for what uh, a joint policy for what we all are going to do at that state, at that age, and that uh, and some expected value that each of us gets, and that defines the V value for uh, uh, that uh, player and that H and that S, and then we keep going towards the path. Uh, this is how this is done. And uh, <clears throat> and then I guess uh, uh, after, you know, you reach the day zero, you output the policy you computed. Uh, and, and again, of course, like if you fancy, right, I mean, you don't want to, you, you want to use a bandit algorithm when you compute the CCs here. And the reason for that is you don't want this to blow up. You don't want to write down this matrix because it's going to blow up uh, with the cardinality. Like it's going to be the pro like to write down this tensor of, of the stage game. Uh, that's going to be exponential in the number of players. So you don't want to write it down. So you, instead, you do no regret learning. You have every player do no regret learning at uh, uh, every stage state at every h okay so this is, this is how you do backwards induction and, and what we want to do is we want to do the same uh, except we cannot just we don't have access we don't have access to the to your wi-fi network sorry alexa will go. Right. So, I'm close to, alexa is reminding me i should be done so let me, let me so um uh, yeah, so I guess the difficulty here is that, you know, like you cannot do backwards induction because you don't have access to all these states. I mean, you don't know the transitions, you don't know which state you can reach. So you have to resolve, uh, you know, those, those kinds of, of, of issues, okay? Uh, and uh, um, yeah, so um, the, um, yeah, so, 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 so what we do is we, uh, the elements, uh, let's say, of, of our solution is we keep a uh, policy cover of sort of like uh, policies that are uh, uh, dedicated to reach uh, different states at different uh, points in the horizon. And um, uh, we give optimistic bonuses uh, to states that we uh, uh, haven't seen a lot, so to encourage the algorithm to get there. But sort of like if in the process of our learning, uh, we stop uh, seeing new states, we just uh, stop and output the uh, policy that uh, uh, we computed in the most recent uh, uh, round of interaction. So this is roughly speaking uh, what we do. So, right, and, and the reason is we don't have access. We don't have access to uh, all the states in the 
uh, in, in the system, but we keep covers uh, of, you know, what uh, states, you know, like we, what states we know how we know how to reach. Um, um, and um, uh, if uh, 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 at some uh, iteration of our algorithm, uh, we even with uh, bonuses uh, uh, to uh, rarely occurring states, uh, these states are not occurring more, we're like, okay, these states are irrelevant for the optimal uh, policy. So we just, uh, uh, they're not, they're not going to give us any uh, deviation uh, paths. So we, we, we stop the interaction and we, uh, and we, and we uh, output the policy that uh, uh, we most recently played. Uh, let me not uh, get into the, into more details, but uh, I, I kind of, uh, you know, gave uh, the intuition, but so um, uh, uh, to conclude, um, yeah, so I mean, there's this interesting, beautiful space here of uh, equilibrium computation in, in, in stochastic game. And um, uh, uh, again, th there are a lot of uh, open problems. Uh, in this work, we, we, we kind of like uh, uh, show some uh, impossibility results, uh, in particular for uh, computational learning or, or Markov and stationary uh, CCEs, even CCEs, which is surprising. And what we advocate here is that, you know, like an open path for investigation is Markov and non-stationary uh, um, <coughs> uh, 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 CCs, where, where we show some polynomial results, but these are first cut results. Um, uh, 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 you know, like, uh, it would be nice to have more natural, uh, simpler algorithms for computing um, uh, 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 mark of non-stationary CCs. As I was saying earlier, we keep a cover of uh, uh, a cover of policies that are dedicated to kind of like hit uh, different uh, combinations of states and H uh, that we know how to get to, um, and we use those policies uh, in the iterations of our algorithm to make sure that we collect enough samples from different states at different points of the horizon. But uh, you know, it would be nice to have something more natural that doesn't maintain a cover, uh, or, or or does so implicitly. Uh, and on the complexity side, you know, it would be nice to remove this uh, for 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 imperfect uh, epsilon epsilon stationary CC uh, hardness. To remove this PCP assumption for constant epsilons. Um, yeah, and of course the standard thing that people are interested in here, what, what happens beyond the tabular case where you have a finite states and actions and you want to do function approximation as well. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so sorry for going a bit longer. Thank uh, you very much.